Hi, and welcome to the second part of our Waves Linear Multiband Compressor Tutorial. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a, a more detailed look at all of the controls on the Linear Phase Multiband Compressor. Okay, to start with, uh, the first thing you'll notice there are, uh, within this display area here, there are four crossovers, and uh, each one of these allows us to set the, the frequency band to be treated. So, we can grab these sliders here and we can move them. You'll notice the frequency is changing here, so we could set that to uh, from 16 hertz up to uh, right away up to 350. Okay, so basically this allows us to split the signal into into various frequency bands. We can move all of these sliders here, left or right, and uh, you'll notice that by moving those sliders, we've got five areas here that uh, can then be treated. Okay, next of all, uh, we're going to take a look at the controls for each of these bands. So uh, if we take a, a, this mid frequency band here, and uh, let's just uh, solo that. And the, what you'll notice is we have a threshold control, and the threshold, uh, whenever the signal exceeds the threshold, that's the point at which gain reduction will be applied. So uh, if, we, if we set the threshold right the way up there, we can see the signal here is not crossing this point, uh, so no gain reduction is applied. Uh, we can grab this arrow and bring it down and set the, uh, the desired point at which we want the uh, compression to be applied. You can also grab the numbers here in this uh, threshold box and move that up and down. And once you're happy with that, uh, we can move on to the, uh, the next stage. Okay, below the threshold, you'll notice there's a gain control. And as uh, most gain controls do, this sets the overall output level of the particular band. So, I mean, we can turn that right down in, in relation to other bands or, or way up there. Okay. Uh, below that we have the range control. Now the range control works in a similar way to the ratio on a regular compressor and sets the intensity of the gain adjustment. So if you see, you notice this blue band here um, following the curve. If we adjust the range or the ratio we, we, can, we can see that that band is getting narrower or wider depending on which way we pull it. And, and that sets the field of, of scope within which the, uh, or the range effectively within which the uh, gain reduction will be applied. So below that we have the attack now, and the attack, just like on a regular compressor, sets the time it takes for the gain adjustment to be applied or to kick in once the signal has exceeded or crossed over this threshold point. So once this signal crosses our threshold, we would like the gain reduction to be applied, say, a uh, 100 milliseconds later, okay? Or we can, we can set that to wherever, wherever we like. And below that, uh, again, just on a, uh, as on a regular compressor, we can see uh, the release setting. And this uh, sets the time it takes from when the signal has fallen below the threshold point the time it takes for the state of gain reduction to be released uh, or you know for it to let go of the the state of gain reduction okay um, now th those are the main controls and below the release you'll notice there's a solo uh, which allows you to uh, as i've done in this example solo and home in on a particular frequency band um, and next to that, there's a bypass control that allows us to bypass a particular frequency band so we can hear other bands in relation to each other. So if I take that off solo, we listen to the whole thing. Okay, I can bypass that band there that we've just treated. You'll notice that the blue range uh, display there has disappeared. Okay, let's put that back on for a minute. So now let's move over to the output section um, where we'll notice there's a gain level which sets the overall output of the, of the combined signal of, from each band. And then we have a trim button which uh, when an over is detected, if you hit the trim button, 
uh, it will reduce the gain, the output gain, by the amount of, uh, of the over of the clipping. Um, just below that we have dither. Now, uh, dither adds quantization noise to the signal. Um, and use of dither is recommended unless you know your host passes 32-bit audio back to the host. So, uh, recommended to leave it on. A dither is a whole uh, subject on its own and we'll look at that later on in another tutorial. Uh, but moving on, you'll see below the dither we have makeup. Now, uh, we can set this to manual or automatic. And this allows us to make up for the amount of lost gain from compression so the overall output gain is higher. We can switch that to auto or we can switch that to manual and uh, that's that. Okay, now um, just below that we have the adaptive control which sets the sensitivity of a band um, to the energy in its masker band which is the band below. So basically this is, allows uh, one band not to mask another band. Uh, so when there is high energy in a certain band, the threshold will be lifted for the band above it to be demasked. So, and, and we can set that from off right the way up to uh, 12 there. Um, so some experimentation of the use of the adaptive control is uh, highly recommended. Um, below that we have the automatic release control which sets the optimal release time in relation to the manual release time that, that we set previously in, the, uh, in each band here from this uh, release setting. So, um, so when it's off, uh, when this uh, release is set to manual, um, your absolute release time as set here will be maintained. Um, Okay, so and below this now we have the uh, behavior section. Now we've got two types of behavior here. We've got opto and we've got electro. Opto has the effect of um, effectively putting on the brakes or slowing down as the gain reduction approaches zero. Opto is useful for deeper compression applications. Electro is the default setting and is pretty much the opposite of opto. It has the effect of speeding up as the gain reduction approaches zero. Uh, electro mode minimizes distortion and optimizes the level. It's great for moderate compression applications where maximum level and density is required. And below that we have knee. Uh, now the knee setting affects all four bands. Uh, higher value or hard knee settings make the sound punchier with a harder edge and uh, softer knee values do the opposite. And uh, then obviously we have this main control section here which we looked at initially. Uh, you'll notice that within this main control section as well as being able to set the, the width of the bands we have these uh, controls here that we can use to, to drag the gain up and down. You'll notice that as I move this the gain in each of these boxes uh, for its relevant band moves up or down. You'll notice that uh, in between uh, the, these uh, settings here and the individual band settings, we have these master controls. Uh, the master controls allow you to affect all of the bands simultaneously for each of the parameters, so the threshold, gain, range, attack and release. We can grab the master threshold and you'll notice that all of the thresholds uh, move up and down relative to each other and the gain we can turn all of it up, you'll notice that see, it's uh, going down there, going up there. The range, we can set the overall range for the entire uh, selection of bands. Uh, we can change the attack for all the bands simultaneously and we can also change the release for all the bands simultaneously. So there you have it, a more in-depth look at the uh, Waves Linear Multiband Compressor and um, 
some experimentation is uh, very much recommended. Thanks for watching.